How can we integrate a vector function? Well, it works similar to differentiation. We integrate all components separately, as you will learn in this video. So, what's the definition of the definite integral? Integral from a to b, r t dt. Well, we form the Riemann sum, sum as 1 to infinity, r at the star at some point uh, in the appropriate interval times delta t, and then we take the limit n to infinity. Now we can, uh, this, uh, this part uh, can be separated into components. So if you write r as f, uh, f of t times i plus g of t times j, you have the i component plus the j component. No problems for that because we just have a finite sum and we take the limit after that. Uh, and, uh, but if those uh, limits both exist, we can use a sum rule of limits and take the two separate limits and then get the uh, limit n to infinity from this first sum, which is just the definite integral of f, plus the limit of this second sum, which is the, the definite interval integral of g. So, how do you have to integrate a vector function? Just integrate both components separately in the, the definite integral. And as a consequence, you can use the main theorem of calculus. This integral from a to b is just capital R of B minus capital R of A, where the capital R prime consists the antiderivatives of the components of small r. So capital R of prime is, has to be equal to the small r. So the first component of capital R contains the antiderivative of capital F, and the second uh, component of capital R contains the antiderivative of, of G. Well, and so on, if your vector function contains more components. So let's do an example. Uh, well, let's do an example in 3D. So uh, we have r of t equals g times i plus g times j plus h times k. So what's an indefinite integral? Indefinite integral is just also integrate all components separately. So integrate first component times i, plus integrate second component times j, plus integrate third component times k. And the derivative of 2 times the cosine equals 2 times the sine. And the derivative of the sine equals minus the cosine. And then the derivative of uh, 2t equals t squared. And now we have a, uh, the uh, indefinite integral, so we can add some integration constant, uh, which will be now some arbitrary factor in R3. Now, and if you have this uh, 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 indefinite integral, you can also compute a definite integral if you integrate, for example, from 0 to pi over 2. So what do you need to do? You just plug in the boundaries, uh, boundary values in your antiderivative over here. Constant drops out, of course, because you do upper boundary minus lower boundary. So you have the 2 times sine of pi over 2 equals 2 minus 2 times sine of 0 remains 2. And then the cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. So you have only the lower boundary minus the uh, minus minus the cosine of zero, so you get a one times j. And for the t squared, if on the upper boundary we have pi over two squared, and on the lower boundary we have zero, so we get pi squared over four times k. So integrating a vector function is just the same as integrating the component, so it's very similar to what you have learned already before.